Yeah, so um, basically here with, well, her name is Sextopia Blog, but she goes by another name. But you know, what I'm saying we we just gonna we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep that where it is. Now, if you should have known from our last video, um, that we spoke on, and um, we're kind of doing like a, a pre-tape of this situation here. I kind of did a little different twist because we have to kind of um, do things differently now because YT is on a different mission and we just got to respect what they're doing and it is what it is. So I, I say this to say that sometimes we have to start things up by asking people simple questions like, how was your day? You know, how did things go? Like, I, I, you know, that's a, that's a real rhythm that I'm into. And I feel that we all just be lying most of the time. We be like, Yo, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. No complaints, everything. And I'm like, we, human beings know when something's wrong with somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Like, me and her, we, we have a, a mutual friend, but I could know when this particular person is down, even if he or she says she's good, right? But, you know, sometimes people just don't want to get into it. People don't want to put you on to the issues. Or maybe they just don't want to talk about certain things. But that's the thing about energy. Energy about human beings, no matter what they tell you, you can feel. You know? You ever watched the movie? Um, what was the movie when they were in um, the panic room? And there was a point when the woman, J Jodie Foster, they was asking how the cops came. They knew something was wrong in the house. So they was like, is everything okay? And she's like, everything's fine. And she tried to like wink. And mm -hmm. the, the cop came back later because he knew something was wrong. Like he felt like, yo, something ain't right. Like, I don't know you, but I know that somebody called the cops and something was a little off. So I checked on, well, we didn't, we mentioned her name before. So I checked on Fatima, for example. And I'm like, are you good? You know what I'm saying? You got a big situation happening in a few hours. Like, you good? She's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm like, uh, well, you sure? Because like, <laughs> you, know, you, you don't know. A person can be tired, person can eat, maybe a person is thirsty. And it, it could be anything, you know what I mean? You have to know when people, you know, read minds, you read the energy, you know what I'm saying? And I'm going to do this live right now. I'm going to ask her right now. So, Fatima, are you, how you feel today? I feel nice. I'm good. Excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Always. And how was your day? I had a good day. Busy, busy. I took the day off, but I had a lot of errands to run. So. Any frustration in the day? Uh, no, not today. Okay. <laughs> not, so, today. not today, but probably tomorrow, my mother, So don't push it. <laughs> <Not today. laughs> it was hot. So, it was hot, but I like the heat. That's it. I like. Yeah, it. I do too. In a weird way, I like the heat because it's like it's kind of like a. Uh, it's like a tactic of like, you know, it's like the show. What was the show um, where you had to like go through these? Like, it's like a challenge, right? It's a challenge. So it's like, you know, it's mad hot today. Today was today was literally today like, was today was a scorcher, right? Today was abnormal. But you know what I did today? I took How was your day? I had a really good day. Yeah, I, I did. I know some of the people sitting there like, man, Nate, you can say that with a straight face. No, I, I did have a good day today. Um, things were avoided. Situations were avoided. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the mission of me trying to, to, to teach people what we overcome and get past, it's been working. Shout out to the truth. What up, truth? So it, 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 it shows that things have been getting to that point of, of the level of Today was a good day. It's like watching the Ice Cube video years ago, right? Yeah. And it was like, yo, today was a good day. Nobody yeah, I mean, smoke. Yeah. I mean, yesterday this girl shot up. This girl not too far from my neighborhood. She had a. She actually check this out. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna blow your mind with this one, right? In a weird way, somebody. Somebody in a weird way, legit. There's a woman on here. If y'all been watching any of my old videos and. She's an African woman from Senegal. So I'm always doing videos. I did a lot of videos with her in this very salon, right? So ironically, she, we, we, we doing this, 
We're doing this video yesterday. I, I, I get the, um, what's the thing called? That's me. Oh, what feedback is that? So, I got this weird thing on my Citizen app. And, and Citizen app was like, yo, two women shot in a beauty salon. So, I'm like, what? <laughs> so one of my homegirls called was like, yo, so-and-so got shot in a beauty salon. I'm like, what? She owns a beauty salon. Turns out it wasn't the owner. But I did videos with the girl. Like, literally, I was in this very physical beauty salon, and we did mad videos in there. Anyways, it got shot up yesterday, unfortunately. Wow. Yeah, nobody died, but, you know. The fact that that happened is scary. The fact that it happened, man. And the neighborhood ain't even that type of neighborhood. Like, so to see that happen was just insane, crazy. So I have to take heed and say, yo, thank God nobody died. Nobody got really, you know, people got hurt. Two girls got hurt, clearly. But, hey, it could have been a bad day. And usually the worst day is the next day, right? So it's right. like, so today was good. You know what I'm saying? I, I thought today was a good situation. And, um, you know. So I had to know, I know that we had an engagement to do what we had to do today, and we kicked it. I mean, shout out to anybody listening to the podcast. Appreciate you. But, you know, I want them to understand and get a little know-how on who you are to reintroduce yourself. Oh, okay. Well, my name is Satima. I am the creator of Sextopia. It's a blog where I write, um, hold on a moment. It's New York City. Don't worry about that. That's New that's, that's that's the wonderful sound of women. I'm gonna mute it. You should. Nah, nah, don't, don't mute it. Don't mute it. It's worse to have music play. You mute it when music is playing. You have music okay. playing, mute it. That's worse. This is all right. They're not gonna do nothing with that. They oh. hear that. They hear that with my noise when I'm doing this all the time. Yeah. So I'm the creator of Sexopia Blog, where you can come weekly for uh, true erotic stories. Um, some written by me. Some written by other people. And um, it's just like, um, it's just a concept where you could read about different relationships, see how, you know, men and um, women interact in different situations. And um, so it's a lot of fun. I get a lot of great feedback. Everyone's really loving the characters. And um, it's a lead up to my book, which is going to be the uh, Sextopia Chronicles, uh, Mike mm. and Fabiola. And um it's going to go deeper into their story. But they basically, they have an unconventional relationship. And um, I write about it every week. And then I also add in other people's true stories as well, too. Erotic stories. Okay. Now, when you say that you write other people's erotic stories, this is basically like me telling you about, you know, hypothetically, like, yo, let me tell you about this mission. Last night, I went into this massage parlor, and it was crazy, or would that be a situation like, yo, there's an ex-girlfriend of mine that I ran into, yada, yada? Like, is there any boundaries? Well, yeah, that that would be great. Like, um, I don't judge anyone's story or anything like that. But I have to see, you know, the level of the content, what, you know, could be on the blog and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I love that. Um when people just randomly give me their stories, I'm like, oh, where can I put that? You know, how can I frame that? And um, even if someone writes a story where I have people that write a story and then I'll read it, you know, we could add touches and stuff like that, or they have the idea or the experience. Most of the times it's people who have the experience and they tell me the experience and then I can write it as well. And then I'm like, how do you like this about the experience? Like there's a, um, Jamaica trip on the blog. I wrote that story from a uh, firsthand experience from someone told me <laughs> that they have with their sister. So that's on the blog now called the Jamaica story. If you want to read a erotic true story about two sisters on a trip to Jamaica and mm. um, it's really, it's really exciting. So um, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Now, when you say these stories are told to, do you ever use stories that you actually my own personal story. There, there was one story I thought that had something to do with you. I'm not going to read the name of the title. But I was like, um, I'm going to say this. <laughs> I write the stories um, so people who know me and stuff like that, they could find, 
you know, they could kind of see me in the story, but no, it's not have anything to do with me personally, but I do write it in that way when I'm writing a story personally. So <laughs> I could understand why you felt like that because um, I do tend, you know, I do write it the stories like that. So you'll be like, mm. but yeah. I also write it so that you could visualize yourself. I'm sure if you, you were able to visualize yourself um, in the stories when you read them. And um, yeah, so a lot of people tell me, oh, oh I visualize myself as a uh, Mike. And instead of hearing her say Mike, I heard her saying um, Max, you know? And I'm like, oh, okay. And this is like, like you said, was that true? Did that, was there anything when it's true? Yeah. So I, I like that. I like to have that mystery. I like to add that mystery to the blog. <laughs> I yeah, yeah, it, it was definitely serious. But I, I, if anybody's listening to us, definitely a one. Like you know, if you want to sit there and go to P Hub, you're probably better off doing this because this right here was more natural. So if you have to feel that you got to release, I think you should read it. You know, it'd be yeah. like a couple of them. You know, because if yeah. one don't do it, the next one will. But something's gonna get you like, whoa. You know what I mean? Like, oh. And then you yeah. may want to go out there and finish that and do whatever you do. But, ladies and gentlemen, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying both sides. And it um, could also spark your <laughs> imagination. Like, oh, no, I tried. I want to do something mm -hmm. like that. I want to choke yes. my girl. I want to, um, you know, do something different or whatever. Oh, women like that? I didn't know that. Let me try that, you know? So you could add <laughs> aspects into um, your own bedroom from some of the stories. Like, oh, okay, people did that. So um, I couldn't people. imagine... I couldn't imagine anybody ever being bored with you. I, I, I probably could think that a lot of men will probably talk a lot and amp all this up, and then he's with you for a couple of months and can't keep up. Um, because a lot of women that tend to really be uh, sexual for the most part, they don't. They talk, but they don't talk as much. But you talk when the situation is presented. My question to you is: Do you find it? you being a mature woman are the men able to keep up with you or are you able to keep up with them <laughs> well just type of, you know just just generally generally speaking generally um i mean me personally i don't have any issues in my bedroom right? you know so i don't have any issues with my partner keeping up or um because we feed off of each other you know um when when we are making love and stuff like that so but if you read any stories on the blog and you'll see like with mike and fabiola how they approach things and how she she's very like timid at first and stuff like that and then she really starts coming out and is like really sexual at one point and you know it, it, um even mike at one point is like oh wow so it, yeah but <laughs> me personally i'm good <laughs> Um, what is what is what is um, the nationality of Fabiola? Fabiola is whatever nationality that you want her to be. You know, I don't mention it in the blog, but it would be in the book. And you know, some stuff I keep out purposely, um, so you'll come back. Maybe I might mention it, but right now she's just basically your average beautiful woman. You know. <laughs> Sister, Latina, mm. <laughs> Becky, you know, she's mm. all that. <laughs> mm. I mean, we yeah. did say Fabiola because I know usually, you know, saying Fabiola kind of represents. Um, yeah. I, listen, I give my, I give my impression. I, I, I've never met a black woman named Fabiola. <laughs> okay. Personally, personally, personally. <laughs> so that's why I went straight with the Puerto Rican thing. And if you are again, again, if you read the blog. You see what I'm talking about. Now, this is another thing too, and this is one thing I want really, to want to stress to people. Um, I think what people need to realize is that blogging is you got to read, man, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. You got to read, and I, so, and I and I feel that a lot of people are lazy to read. Do you find this being more of a a harder go promoting a vlog versus a blog? Well, um, you know, that's why I write the, sh the stories and format the, them the way that I do. So you're, you're caught from like the opening sentence before the first paragraph is over. You're like, oh, whoa, what's going to happen next? And by the time you get to the ending, you're like, oh, my gosh. 
that was so good. You know, you might even want more. So, um, I mean, I feel people like to read. People still love to read. Um, blogging, it's um, so many hits. Um, generally, when you even search in Google, a lot of times you might even go to a blog. You might pick an article or something. It might be a blog that someone wrote because there's like, I don't know. I don't know the numbers, I don't want to say, but I know there's a lot of blogs out there, hundreds of millions of blogs, so maybe 800 million, maybe even more. But um, yeah, blogging is it's still really um, important. People travel blogs, fashion blogs, lifestyle blogs, family blogs. I happen to write an erotic blog, and that's because um, I feel like it's like, I like to express love, and you know, and I'm not shy about sexual things, and I like to add a little extra to express in love. If you read it, the blog, you'll see all the stories, they're, they're love stories in a way. And then it does have a climax at the end generally, but I write it like that because I want to express love. Damn, okay. So there is a passion of Fatima that has a lot to do with sextopia. Because of course, people want to relate you when they see you, right? they want to be able to relate you to this incredible thing yeah. that you created. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've always enjoyed reading um, erotic books growing up, buying books downtown Fulton Street in Brooklyn, um, Black ow, Art, ow. you know, <laughs> uh, Donald Goring, Zane, um, Terry McMillan. So just so many different books. I've, I, I've always enjoyed it myself. I know me personally, that's like my go-to book. I love romance and I love the hearing and reading about sex. Like I, I enjoy it a lot. So okay, it's now, second nature to me to write it. Now, questions are going to be asked, of course. So, so you <laughs> having a blog? Would there be a sextopia um, blog versus sextopia adult film, sextopia visuals, sextopia only fans, like? Like, in other words, what is the array going on here in addition to, let's just say for my viewers that are more, uh, they have the tension span of whatever, and they can't necessarily read, how would they enjoy this, uh, this creativity that you have visually as well if they are not readers? Okay, well, I'm glad you mentioned that because I am going to add a section to the blog um, coming this fall. So right in the beginning of September, mid-September, where it's going to be uh, audio sex. And basically, you'll hear different people reading the, um, the weekly blog. So whichever story um, comes out that week, you'll have the option if you don't want to read it and you want to just... Put your headphones on, lay back and hear maybe my voice or someone else's voice reading it to you. You'll have that option. So that is definitely coming. I want everyone to look out for that. I'm definitely going to add that to the blog just to give um, an additional layer of content, you know, but it's going to be that story for sure. And I'll probably record all the ones that don't have the audio and add it on, you know. Now, when they're re when they're reading this audio, there's there's parts in there that's pretty intense. So, are we gonna get those sound effects? Like, mm -hmm, yeah, <laughs> 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 Fabio, <laughs> he'd be like, mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, listen, you know, sometimes there may be situations where I want to hear something through the headphones. I'm a headphone type of guy, yes, so yeah, I want to be able to like know if I'm if I'm on a trip, I can't necessarily read and be on the road at ninety five, right. two, three o'clock in the morning. So like, I want to be able to say, damn, like, can I be able to stay up when I'm doing these long road trips? Yes, that's literally. I mean, and I mean that literally. Well, <laughs> full on sound effects. I'm telling you, Damn. when you hear this audio, you going to be like, whoo, sweating afterwards. Like, whoever recorded that? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I definitely want it to be, you know, um, enjoyable as you listen to it. So if you read it first and then you listen to it, or if you listen to it and you read it, you know, um, you can enjoy it either way. In terms of visuals, um, 
you know, I might have to work on that for winter 2021. <laughs> you might have some visuals coming out of Six Sophia Vlog. Um, Buenos noches, mi amigas. Hi, Ransom. Look at it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'll work on some visuals, not with me per se <laughs> in the visuals, but <laughs> maybe, you know, we could get some some good people to do some visuals for the vlog. Well, so listen, ladies and gentlemen, he's saying basically you're not going to see her per se, but you know, she, she <laughs> don't have a lot to do with the production. <laughs> you, 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 listen, you may or may not, but you know what I mean? Like, Just can't not, give you it all. I'll be the creator behind the content. Be the <laughs> now, 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 tell me something, which is interesting. You said how Terry McMillan and um, Zane really, you know, inspired you as well. I, I feel yeah. that you know that, that 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 great '90s mode, early 2000s was a sensational thing. I mean, I read a lot of Zane books. I'm a big fan of Terry McMillan. I feel now we kind of lost it, and you know, we talked about this. Like maybe the last 10, maybe even 15 years, mm -hmm. um, I feel the film industry now has like forgotten what we were doing 30 years, 25 years ago. So what what made you, you know? I know you want to get in the film as well, obviously, because you're doing, you know, vlogs. Yes. What What made you just say, "Yo, I want to do this"? Like, because you you are so passionate about this. What made you want to say, "Enough is enough"? Like, because I don't know what's going on with Zane. I don't, I haven't seen a movie's coming there. I haven't seen nothing with Terry yeah. Miller. I felt when Terry Miller got, got caught in that little scandal with her man, things were a little left. So, you know, give us a little bit of education about that. Okay. Well. Like I mentioned, you know, I've always loved and enjoyed. Um, hi. Um, I got to focus in on these comments, too, because I want to say hi to everybody. I'm with a lot of smoke. <laughs> I love these names, man. Homegirl Fire. Thank you. I'm with a lot of smoke. <laughs> That's a few. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so... Um, what was the question again? <laughs> I, had a, I had a blind moment. <laughs> I'll give it to you. Like, we're basically, like, Zane and, 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 and oh, Terry right, McMillan. Right. Things have been taking a little vacation. So, like, how can it... Um, what would be the, the difference with you versus them? Okay. Um, I don't, it's not really be, you know, a, a difference. What I would say is the blog is centered around short stories, you know, that you can just go at your leisure and read. Um, the book will give you, you know, longer content, a full story about um, whichever characters. But when you had initially asked what made me start the blog was just, like I said, hearing friend stories, you know, girl talk and stuff like that. Um, hearing stories from men, and I was just, you know, I had the time, and I wanted to uh, do something creative. I'm a Virgo, so I'm always looking to create. This is my creative time, um, the summer, so I had started it right around my creative time as an outlet, and it really picked up. Like, people was like, oh, I love it. You got to keep going, and this and that. So I had, you know, pre-written a few stories and stuff like that. And really took it serious. And um, I was like, oh, let's just put it out there. Because I just, like I said, I feel we just need more love, be able to express love with one another. Like, you know, um, we don't have our R&B music like we used to have. So, you know, we don't hear it as much as we used to, a man serenading a woman. And, you know, just like really just, you know, just appreciating the opposite sex. Men appreciating women, women appreciating men. Mm -hmm. As well, because you know, everyone's just looking for a come up these days. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, um, listen, I could speak for a lot of men. I think one of our biggest issues, and I'm gonna talk about that, um, when we do our post productions, but yeah, it is this something that I, I don't think a lot of women are gonna be real happy about. Something that I talk about where I can represent a lot of men. And, that's where the clash that happens with women. But we'll okay, well, that that will be continued. But I will give you a hint that a lot of men are gonna be able to understand it and a lot of women are probably gonna try to understand it. You know what I'm saying? Because men just wanna just be kinda in a zone now where we, we wanna read these books, but we wanna live that life. We wanna be able to 
hit and dash, to say the least. You know what I mean? Um, I think couples should read the blog together. Man. Me personally, I think if you're in a relationship and if, if you're female, you can read it with um, your man or if you're a man and you pick it up, read it with your lady. It's so hot, so steamy, so sexual. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so enjoyable just to read about another couple and just cuddle up and then, you know, what that's going to lead to. Come on. You might not even finish the story. I don't know. But this is their short story. I'm sure you will. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing, too. Do you realize that the Zanes, the, the Zanes, the Terry McMillans, now Fatima, a.k.a. Sextopia.com, yes. You guys are kind of like sexologists to people. Like, do you do you do realize that people are gonna want to know a lot of advice and come to you for this? You know, you are aware of this, right? Well, um, I'm sorry. You seem to be very experienced because if you listen, anybody, I'm telling you this from experience. Anybody that could have the mindset, uh -huh. we call this the billionaire mindset here. Okay, Max and Daniel. Anybody that can have the mindset to create something such as extraordinary as you to bring this mentality, you know, this mission of natural essence, of reading, <laughs> imagination, no porn. You know what I mean? Right. I got to give you a lot of credit for that. So you do realize that people are going to look at you more, not necessarily as a sex goddess, but they're going to look right. at you more as, as a teacher, so to speak. Um, are you willing are you aware of this you know what i'm saying because even me as the extraordinaire that i am on i'm still going to be like yo so what do you think about this and i'm going to take it even deeper with you because that's like me sitting down with terry mcmillan that's like me sitting down here with zane you see what i'm saying so right. you know are you willing to to realize that this is pretty much the the format that's going to be presented um you know i don't mind as um answering questions if you know, I'm not saying I am a sex expert or anything like that. I just write true stories, um, <laughs> true erotic stories, stories that are given to me from people. Mm. Um, and that you're able to then um, put your, when you're reading it, put yourself in that person, in that character, see yourself in that. The same way I see myself in the stories, that's why I, I frame them the way I frame them, because I do see myself in them, but they're not you know, particularly my um, experience. But I do um, feel that people do watch a lot of porn and um, it can take away from the visualization and they do say it does damage the brain and stuff like that. So this is a way where you could still um, get uh, sexual stimulation, but you're using your imagination at, at the same time. And that's why I said, Fabiola could be any woman, you know, it's the woman you desire. Mike mm. he could be any guy. He's the guy you desire, you know, Sam, any of the stories basically could be any of the, any person that, you know, you see yourself with. Um, she just dropped the jewel, ladies and gentlemen, once again, see what she came to help it. The thing <laughs> is the natural essence, the imagination. I told you that's like, if you're poor, you do to want to beat it and all that, you gotta think about it. I ain't talking about the show, I'm talking about you want to beat your own Johnson. You, you gotta think on a level of porn. It's not an imagination. That's just a fantasy. You know what I mean, right. but to have an imagination, you have to. It has a natural essence. Shout out to Frozen Six. Listen, see, but I be bringing you all this heat, man. I told to tell y'all, man. You gotta listen. And you know, if you're embarrassed, ask a question. Change your name. Shoot a question. Shout out to Frozen Six for that super chat. I appreciate wow, you, big bro. You know what I'm saying? You. That's right. You know, it, it's, 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 it, it shows a level of, Respect. here is a woman that y'all didn't even realize that <laughs> porn has taken over so bad yeah. that we don't even have imagination no more. Like, y'all just straight living in fantasy. There's no imagination in the fantasy. You know what I mean? You're in a fantasy. It's a fantasy world. Like It's like going to a strip club. This girl tells you she loves you. She dances. So you get out the club and it's like, all right, fantasy's over. But that imagination, that could go a lot. Going, it going, keeps on going. It keeps going. That makes you somebody like think true that. stories. That's why it's very important to me that all the stories are true. And I don't want anyone to make up a story and give it to me. Like, it has to be a true firsthand experience, you know? So you could really get that, like, wow, I know this happened. 
you know, people actually did this and be able to really own in and focus in on that. So it has to be true stories for me anyway. I mean, I, I read um, fiction all the time, but I, I had to make mine be true stories. Like that's what kind of sets me apart. I feel from um, other writers. Everybody maybe. else, right. Okay. Okay. So that's something that, that these are true stories. These are not fiction. Cause I'm not going to put the, we know the authors, some of them were fictional. And they were fictional characters. But you're saying these are yeah. real, so this is this is authentic. Yeah. The um, names, the names. Um, you know, I do change the names when people give me the story. Right. They don't want their name. <laughs> yeah. and ladies and gentlemen, I'm not the fireman. If you read that blog, I'm not the fireman. That's just not me. I'm just letting you know that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, um, fireman was um, chosen because it's a very hot career. You know. Um, the actual character is based on not necessarily is a fireman, but that part was definitely chosen because it's like one of the hottest careers for a man is like a fireman or like a pilot and stuff like that. So, you know, names and little things I um, will change on the blog just to protect people because, you know, that's what they want to stay more anonymous, but they want the story out there. So now if anyone wants to give a true story with their name, I'm, fine that's that's even better but i haven't got one yet <laughs> so would you encourage that you would encourage that what if somebody wants to share a story with you yeah on this blog would you be willing to post that yeah as long as it's a true story it's their story yeah i'm willing to post it definitely you know as long as it's still mature content and not like super explicit content we're still trying to just be mature you know but not like explicit for something explicit you know, I probably do like where if you click on that, maybe you have to say, you know, you're over 18 and stuff like that. So I would have to work on that. So not like explicit, explicit, but. All right. So explicit meaning like if a girl, if a girl um, gives head versus a girl got a little drop in her mouth, like well, that, that would be. No, you could, you could definitely write about a, that, um, okay. a low drop. Yeah, that's, that's not a that's nothing, right? That's like yeah. I mean, something more like um, um, maybe writing about like double penetration or something like that. Okay. Like okay. That. that probably would be a little too. That's more on the explicit side, not mature. You know, Let me ask you this: from what you do, from your profession of getting these stories, we as men, we feel that men are just all freaks. You as a woman. Do you feel that there's a lot more freaky women than you could imagine, or is it just like a small amount? Like from your experiences from these stories, generally speaking, you know, what have you come to the conclusion? Are niggas nastier than men? I mean, men nastier than women, or you know, what, 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 what did you pick up? Um, women, I feel women, um, the more comfortable they are with their partner, you know, the nastier that they're gonna be, and um. I think I think men men still are a little, a little more raunchier in, in their storytelling and stuff like that. And we're like, whoa. And um women though, women we're we're selectively freaky. I mean, most women, most women are selectively freaky. We're not freaky with every single person. Right, right. But right. Yeah, like right, right. Shout out to Ace is number one. I'm sorry, brother, brother, that comment is extremely wrong. Um, Dominican chicks are my favorite females. Okay, that's your opinion. That's your, you know, that's what yeah, you Yeah, they're do. his favorite. That's cool. That's your favorite. But this is the part I got to correct you on. Naturally, they got the hottest bodies in the Spanish yeah, world. That's, that's, not, not, nice. that's, not, that's not true. <laughs> Don't be body shaming, Aces. Yeah, sorry, Aces. I'm sorry, that's completely wrong. But if that's You're going in, Yeah, right. Aces, Aces, if you was a New Yorker, and you were telling me you lived in the Bronx, and you've been living, maybe I can believe that. But I know you don't. You're probably going on the strength of this. No disrespect, because you probably traveled to DR for the first time in your life, and you never seen so many women at an array at your. Thesis. We don't. We don't do that in here anymore. So those conversations are gone. I'm. You know, if I talk about Dominican women, they are in the Bronx. They are in Brooklyn. They are up in Manhattan. They. They. You know, it's everything is here, 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 Queens. So clearly, if that was the case, you wouldn't have said that. So that's how I come. I'm just telling you, it's just not true. Shout out to God that I'm back and damn, make sure you're racing down. 
Mates block again. <laughs> yeah, well, that's both our blocks. We in New York City, so they street racing both of both of us. If you hear it on hers, it's hearing it on mine. Because we got these idiots that zoom, 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 you know what I'm saying? So shout out to Ransom. This seems like the online version of publication that I used to purchase and pack and save back in the day, late nineties, early two thousand. That was the time. Yeah, that was the time. That was the time. And we, we kind of lost that because y'all let Tyler Perry do all these movies. And it's just like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, used to, I used to like, me personally, I went to a few Tyler Perry stage shows when I was um, younger at the Beacon Theater. And yeah. that was life for me. That, that really was life. I ain't going to take that away from Tyler. And seeing no. him do all them characters and all them beautiful black actors on the no, stage. No, no, Tyler, you're right about like that. Everything. Those are dope. The Beacon yeah, Theater that. shows with Tyler Perry, yeah. that was a big thing for New Yorkers and New Jersey and Connecticut. It was a huge, huge thing. Yeah. I felt that that's the Tyler Perry I knew. I'm not a fan of Tyler Perry, the filmmaker. If Tyler Perry yeah. made 100 films, I'd probably like two. And I'm not even being funny. Maybe, maybe three at the max. Mm -hmm. So that's just, you know what I mean? That's just my thing. But here yeah, I'm an individual. In order for me to do real good film, I got to go back into the crits. I got to go back into the 70s. The 80s, the 90s. I'm, right. I'm just more really, you know what I mean? We heard talked about well, this, so that's what, you know, we're trying to bring a different mode. And when these films come out, it's going to be like, how can something be so simple but so official? So right now, we live in a world where you got 50 Cent and Tyler Perry doing films, but oh, oh well, well, it is what it is, right? Um, yeah. A Dominican cloth is different. <laughs> um, yes, if you go overseas to Dominican Republic versus Puerto Rico, yes, but. We don't count that here on this show because we are New Yorkers, so it's a whole different situation here. Time. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, melting pot here. <laughs> yeah, it's a melting pot here, buddy. Um, yeah. Imagination is very fun. I agree, Kate. So I agree with that. The imagination. Like when, I don't know, growing up, they used to always say, like, you know, go into your imagination, put your thinking cap on, you know, like little phrases like that to keep you wondering and thinking and asking the right questions and stuff like that. So, yeah. Let me ask you this, Matino. If you were on a subway, a bus, whatever you were on, um, a car, at the light, whatever, did you ever look at a man in your past and he had no clue what you were thinking about him, just oblivious completely. Like maybe you were thinking about putting your whole face in this man's balls, or what I don't know, but you, just particularly, like straight up, like, because this is the thing, a lot of men don't think that women are into us the way we think in the gutter about y'all. So do women, generally speaking, whether it's you or people around you, people that tell you stories, do you find that Women secretly have their mind in the gutter a lot more than men can imagine. Oh yeah, women think about sex way more than men um, could imagine. So definitely, and we like to plan it too. Women, especially single women, um, we love to plan sex or who you know um, have an appointment, a dick appointment. They like to call that sometimes. So I, I mean, personally, do, I'm not. I don't really approach men, but I, you know, if a good looking man, one day I'll give you an example. Um, one day I was crossing the street and I knew I had a really good this day. I had on some really nice tight fitted jeans, short um, little cute jacket. I remember I had on like some tall boots over the knees. So it was like really sexy. I was walking the street across the street and this guy was like uh, 718, da 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 da. And I was like, what is that? And he's like, that's my phone number. Mm. And I was like, that's your number? And then I was looking and he was in a, um, you know, he was in a nice car. That made that, you know, I'm not trying to say like that was everything, but he was in a nice car and he had a, you know, a really good looking face and stuff like that. And I called him. I took that number and I called him because I was like, that's so cute. I thought I had really liked that. <laughs> Cars was beeping. He was like, you got it, right? You got it. I was like, I got it. Yo, that's so hold on. He just started saying the number. That's so cute. Yeah. Wild. And I was like, I'm what is that? that. Mm -hmm. He was like, that's my number, call me, y'all, I want you to call me. And then I look, I'm like, mm. Mm. <laughs> And we had a whirlwind affair. <laughs> now listen, the, the, the thing was, right, when he, um, when, what borough was this, first of all? 
Oh, Brooklyn. This is like okay, of course. <laughs> All right, so check it. Like, exactly. this, 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 this is what I be telling these clowns. Here's natural essences. Natural essence. Do the pro show some fly shit starting just saying the number, which yeah, was very can. unique, very simple, but super unique. This wow. dude was a good looking dude. Nigga had a nice sweat. You know, how? what was the follow up and continuation to this presentation? You know, I just, I think I hit over the text, like, it's Fatima. And then um, we had some conversation after that. And then we just spoke through the phone for maybe about a month. And then he was like, I can't take this any anymore. I want to um, take you out. And then we finally did have a nice date. Maybe I should start those writers on my own. Bravo, as far as I should say, definitely for a long time. Yes, the goddamn thing. I can't with you. Yeah, I can't right now. Yes, um, send them to Sextopia Blog at gmail dot com. That's at hold on, New York in effect. New York in effect, baby. It's the music That's we like to hear. Okay, this is what we do. T O P I A blog, B L O G, at gmail.com. And we can collaborate and get your story out next week on the blog. Let's do it. Mm. Let's do it. Ransom again. What did he say? For stories featuring forbidden love, i.e., officer enlisted in the military, teacher, student. What do, what do you do to protect? Yeah, I mean, I would. If they would just want to give me the story and I'll write and put my spin on it and uh, change the names, they change the occupation, you know, little things can be changed and no one would ever know, especially um, if it's someone that I particularly don't know at all and don't have any connection to. Um, I could see it being out there. No one would know. It would be anonymous, definitely. So, um in terms of me saying anything, no, I would keep everything anonymous and, and, you know, probably can make an agreement with someone who was like really, really, you know, wanted some real confidentiality. I wouldn't mind making like a little confidentiality agreement. We both signed and that's that. Mm -hmm. it's it, was, it was, it was, it was, salute to Santos. What up, big bro? That's the bro right there. Brooklyn, we already I know what we do. says podcast. <laughs> Shout out to Misha. What up, Misha? Hi, Misha. Yeah, now. yeah. Nice been in my aid, man. Listen, I know we all going through our little thing, man. August, summer's about to be over. We got we trying to do crunch time. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot going on. I miss you, girl, and I hope all is well. Um, as you can see, you know what I'm saying? We have a an addition to this family right here. So we're gonna be doing a lot of building. And I know a lot of you do is listen again. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you for Timmy gonna, you know, I give you jerk off material, but she's gonna give you jerk off material on that website. So <laughs> Guaranteed. Definitely guaranteed. on that yeah. website. Yeah, so no more than watch no point up, nigga. Read this shit in the bathroom, get involved, and you know what I'm saying? Lock that door. Make sure it's locked. Make sure that shit is locked, nigga. You got kids, lock your family, mama, the papa. Lock that door, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Get naked and just read and just go off. Like, you know what I'm saying? Stand up if you gotta look in the man, you know, get get with it. You know what I'm saying? Get in get character. In, get in <laughs> character, nigga, but lock the door, nigga. Lock the door. Like, you know, Fatima said something the other day. They, <laughs> they was asking, like, what if you want to get freaky with She like, first and foremost, kids in the house, you gotta lock that door. You gotta lock <laughs> that door. Okay, don't don't lock it and keep the key in there, nigga. Lock the <laughs> open the door. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Lock that damn door. So, you know, and, and ladies, you know, listen, y'all know no stranger to this either. Could y'all get in there? Y'all, you because know, y'all like, I don't know what it is. Dudes are sitting in the toilet bowl. Y'all like to sit in the tub or whatever. You know, yeah. in the shower. So, lock that damn door. So, you read this thing. But, man, ladies and gentlemen, trust me, you want to bring the mental stimulation back because, especially for men, it's very important for your libido. So once you let that mental stimulation, I was telling y'all, like, it's like thinking about that woman at your job. I mean, you got to be careful with that these days, but thinking about it, it's not a crime. You're thinking about it, like, ooh, you know, you're going to see the difference with that masturbation process versus you doing it to a point. 
Mm. It's more in reality because it's someone that you could actually have a sexual experience with because especially if you believe in like the law of the attraction or the universe manifestation, you know, your thoughts is what you create. So you have a woman at your job. She's hot, sexy, beautiful. You want her. Now you're imagining her. You're masturbating to her. You're um, you got the courage now to ask her how she accepts, you know because all of that was in the universe. So I always believe everything is already in the universe. You just have to pull it into your dimension where you're at right now. So definitely mm. keep that imagination. This, this, this that. a woman's telling you, because this is the, because they, y'all just, y'all got to deliver properly. I mean, That's a lot the, of one, the story, Mike and Fabiola, Mike manifested that relationship. He manifested Fabiola and he's grooming her to be how, the woman he wants her to be and she wants to be the woman that he wants so it's it's easy for him you know but because she she she's at a point in her life where she wants to feel um some type of dominance she wants someone who um in in her mind if he's checking for her everything she's doing he's watching her whereabouts and stuff like that it to her it's like he is um he cares about her, you know, it doesn't feel like uh, controlling. Some people would, would um, conflate that with controlling, but to her, it's not, it's like what she really wants. She wants to know that she's protected and that, you know, she has this hot fireman. <laughs> with, <laughs> with this, go figure, yeah. hot fireman. I mean, the, yeah. me and her already know, we, we, they, they, that may go over your heads because y'all have no clue. <laughs> yeah, she know what I'm talking about, but listen. <laughs> Listen, oh, hold on. Here we go again. Listen, Donna <laughs> Bacon, Dominican women certainly like having their own look about them. Couldn't put my finger on what was different when I listened to me. When I talk about Dominican women, it has to do with Inwood, Washington Heights, Brooklyn, the Bronx. Do not talk to me about Dominican women in DR because I know, see the difference there. This is the difference. If you're speaking from a Taurus sex, um, tourism level, I'm not the guy to talk to no more about those. Those videos are done. I'm over. I'm finished with that. If you a real dude or a woman that knows what I'm talking about, we got to talk about the Bronx. We got to talk about Inwood. We got to talk about Washington Heights. We got to talk about Brooklyn. We got to talk about Bushwick. We got... This is where we can go somewhere with that in a different order if you want to speak on Dominican women here. But until then, again, I appreciate it. Please, with all due respect, Let's just keep it in NYC when we talk about Dominican women. No other. You know what I'm saying? Because once I start throwing you different Asian women, you're going to go to Asia. You're going to go to, I want to talk about the Asian women in Queens. I want to talk about the Asian women in Staten Island. You want to talk about Italy? No, we talk about Staten Island. Like, I got it for every borough. So let's please just respect that. Shout out to Bo C. Um, shout out to Taylor. Yes, the stage plays were better. Hey, man, yeah. check. It was. Yeah, Taylor, it was. that was true. That was true, yeah. It was better, so it's like we so film right now. I feel as though. Well, you know what somebody told me though. They said, um, an OG told me this in 2003. He said Hollywood, Black Hollywood was from 1972 to 2002. Yo, that still stayed in my head till today. Okay. He said that. He said we had a 30 year run of okay. authentic classic films. So it's kind of interesting. So. You know, just 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 a FYI for y'all filmmakers, y'all feel future filmmakers where that man was going with that. Um, Goddamn Dakin man said, Oh yeah, I found an early on of the biggest sex organ in the world is between her ears and did it a few times, but you can get her to climax over the phone. Okay, bro, are you talking about a DR conversation? No, that's true though. You can't do true? that. But I wanna <laughs> There's a story on the blog called the uh, vacation. And in that story, it's the Mike and Fabiola story as well. Since he's on vacation, they um, have a lot of, uh, they call it face chat. They're on face chat. So they have a lot of face chat interactions, sex, and stuff like that. So, yeah, you definitely can. Definitely. Especially when you're in your Mm -hmm. Is this true? Oh, yes, phone sets. What happened to this? Yeah, well, now it's face chat sex. <laughs> right. Now right. it's face chat sex. This week's story coming out is called Acting Up, and it's um, 
it has a lot of different levels as like that they they take their sex you know just like the vacation had like a lot of different levels um with the underwear and the in the, the um the airport scene when he was um flying music when he was flying to uh Costa Rica and stuff like that. So what they what she did to him in the airport, and he's has a hard <laughs> on. He has a hard on in the airport because she's purposely teasing him because you know she's mad that she's basically not getting sick. So she's teasing him at the airport. And um, so basically every um paragraph in the vacation is some type of sexual interaction between them with her at work she's doing things like at, at work she's literally doing things so it's really cool that's a great story go read the vacation and you will definitely visualize one is on vacation and one isn't now the fire department is coming to put out the fire <laughs> them, them dr travelers boy they don't stop <laughs> Be our But we got a lot of Latin women here where we gotta get on a plane and go visit them either. So, Actually, the last story that's on the blog, um, this week's story, the 2 a.m. Mike is rushing to Fabiola at 2 a.m. and he gets pulled over by the police. So definitely go read that so you can see what happens when he gets pulled over by the police. On his way to get some booty. <laughs> See what I mean about that imagination? Just for her yeah. saying boote, you know what I mean? You're saying, damn, because women don't talk like that anymore. <laughs> we, let's bring back a, a male and female. We need the imagination, man. Yeah, we need that. Serious, back. man. Just That's why that I have the talk. I want it to be like very true sexual stories between, you know, men and women. And um, just to bring back love, just to hear how a man thinks about a woman or give you insight how a woman thinks about a man and how she prepares for her man or how this man prepares to ask this woman out and stuff like that. And how they interact with missing each other and stuff like that, too. So, I like Shout out to Misha, world. man. I miss you, too, man. I, listen, man, you know you're my heart. Man. Oh, Misha. <laughs> Sweet. She already showed the love, so I love you, baby. Listen to that, Misha. Little sister, so she said, oh, welcome. Yes, she's gorgeous. Oh, yes, thank you, Misha. Love you. I love when thank women, because Misha's a very sexy woman. Yeah, from one beautiful woman to the next. Yes, one Thank beautiful you, sex, and they, they, these are sexual beasts right here. Like, you know what I mean? I know them on different levels, but you know what I mean? They, see how they connect? It's like beautiful. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah, it's beautiful. See that connection? So, fellas, we got to start doing that instead of comparing Bronx stories and DR stories. Let's just stop doing that, right? So, <laughs> shout, shout out to uh, Taylor. Um, yeah, I know. I know. There, there's a few of them on here. Um, yeah, there are. I'm definitely keeping my eyes open. But again, like we always tell people, just make sure that we have, uh, you know, you guys do have your, uh, we are Mexicans. Oh, yeah, I see one nut case here. Let me, let me just get them out of here. But yeah, so um, I want to also uh, bring to, now we, we spoke about this off camera. Um, tell us about this, this incredible thing that you are, uh, man courting woman. What, what is that about? What is it? Men courting women. Oh, men courting women. <laughs> it's just like bringing it back and, you know, taking the time out to get in to know a woman, you know, um, asking her out on a date, a nice dinner date, maybe picking her up, opening the door, you know, um, opening when she's going to sit down, pulling the chair back. You know, just courting is just like spending time really trying to get to know someone, not just making it about, you know, a sexual experience. So just like really making a woman feel like a woman, like um, like she wants to take her time doing her makeup for the date or getting doing her hair and her nails. You know, she wants to come out looking as feminine as possible. Allowing a woman to rest in her feminine is like the greatest gift a man could do for a woman. And if you like read the blog, you'll see how. Um, Mike, he allows Fabiola to like really rest in her feminine. So it's it's like she's so able just to give so much love to him um, because of that, because she feels like supported, you know, she feels like he'll just surprise her with something like, you know, um, 
with some sex or, you know, however she's feeling, he'll listen. He'll make sure that, um, you know, he gives her the attention that she desires. Women, we love a lot of attention, you know, um, certain times, certain times of the month, no. But you can kind of tell when, you know, you should be able to give your woman a lot of attention. Pushing her chair is corny. I didn't say pushing her chair in, but you could pull it out. Okay, and people like old school, it's called traditional, and that's like the biggest problem is that we go so far away from tradition, we want to make it corny, or that's for suckers, or that's for lames. You want to make your woman feel good, and if pulling out her chair, oh, I, I do not open a door with a man. I, I don't. I'll open my car door, yeah, but if we're going down to a restaurant anywhere, I even if I get to that door first, I step to the side, I let him open it i'll go in you know i wait for him to come from behind come on guys y'all gotta do better you don't have to push the chair in but she should definitely be looking to pull her chair out so she can sit down comfortably and then she could take it in herself you know but yeah you have to do that like those little things it, it really makes a woman feel like a woman it's you know we're talking about making her feel good you know i understand um moose man you could think it's it's corny Okay, that's fine, but sh you can pull it out. It's nice. That's just like in the old days when a woman wanted a cigarette and a man would light it for her, you know what I mean? Or when a woman is like, I'm going to go to the powder my nose and she gets up, the man stands up. It's just certain things that, you know, it shows that you have um, some, I guess, home training or something. So what actually showed you some values. Yeah, these are like things. That's what's like missing with men. Like everyone like talks about like toxic max um masculinity <laughs> masculinity. You could like bring it down a notch and do some sweeter stuff. Well, that's that's the thing because I think with people, um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it's the best. Uh, I'm not I'm not proving this right now, but all you brothers want to sit here and think like, yo, what's the best thing to use? But you can kind of use this. God forbid, you and the shorty don't got no damn lube. This shit right here works wonders. But anyway, moving <laughs> along, the situation. <laughs> um, I want to I want to stress that um, a lot of times when I hear y'all men have these issues with being respectful, it's almost like you used to be that way, and then everybody curved you. So like, um, she's trying to basically let this be known because we spoke about this off camera, man courting women like. You know what I'm saying? So generally, what is that? Just tell them in your in your one your strange word. Somebody just came in on this conversation. Generally, in one sentence, what does that mean? Oh, like I said, it's just um, you know, just thinking traditional, bringing back some traditional values and how men and women um, interact with each other, allowing her to be this feminine person while you're being this masculine man, you know, just opening the door for women, it shows like you're masculine, you're in charge. That's just what I'm talking about. So then she, she could sit back, oh, thank you. Oh, I appreciate you. You're so sweet. Um, you know, so like to get that out of her so she could laugh at all your jokes and she's like, oh, and then she, mm, she wanna go in for a kiss. You know, you, you bring that out of a woman when you take that time out. That's just what I'm saying. Try it, try it. Don't knock it, try it. That's what courting is. And that will be the response you get back from your lady. You know what I'm saying? You, you'll, she'll be mm, blushing every five minutes. Her cheeks are mad red. She's blushing. She's patting you on your arm, patting you, you know, rubbing your shoulder, rubbing your thigh, stuff like that. You'll get these reaction out of out of the woman, you know? If, if That's what I think. <laughs> Thank you. I'm with <laughs> all the smoke. Yeah. And you can bring this sexiness, like playfulness out of your date. You know what I'm saying? Just by like tweaking those little things and not just being the average AJ. So if you read my stories, you'll see that AJ is just an average Joe. He does everything every guy does. He doesn't set himself apart. He doesn't do anything different. He's an AJ. You know, he could have money. He could have the the cars, he could have everything, but he just, when it comes to that woman, he's not doing anything extra. You know what I'm saying? So he's an AJ. He's just whatever. I like the average Joe thing, AJ. <laughs> but is the average Joe a corny, regular Joe smart that nobody wants? No, 
wrong. I'm not saying that he's he's not just he's not he's not desired. Yeah, he can get a girl. Yeah, women will go out with him and stuff like that. But he might not get you know, <laughs> and all this and all that because he's not putting that effort out. <laughs> Is that a serious question? I'm in pulling out the chair. Yeah, pulling it out. Don't pull it out, but open that door at least. I mean, do one of the two. That's like if you're walking with her, your girl and her shoelace is untied. Are you going to let her bend down and tie her shoe? Can she pick up her foot and you're going to tie her shoe for her? You know, these these are like the little things that, you know, um, show an extra level of care. I would never tie my shoe around um, one of my exes. Like, oh, my shoe's untied. I pick up my foot. He ties it. You know, it's just like, just little, it's like little things. People just forget about little things that could just make someone feel special. Is that lacking now? Yeah, I, I do think it's lacking. You know, I was talking to my brother today and um, he just met someone. So, you know, you just meet someone, it's all great and everything. And he mentioned the girl that he's been dating prior to meeting this person. He said, you know, this new girl, she's cooking for me and this and that. And you know, the, the second girl, she stopped cooking and she, she don't want to do this and that. And I'm like, oh, well, wow, cooking is really important to you. He's like, no, not all the time, but it's nice to come by and, you know, I'm thought of in that way and stuff like that. So the same way you feel like a woman should at least take the time out to think about you, you can take the time out to think about her as well. And vice, you know, it should be like that. So this this new relationship is, is enticing him more because he's like, oh, you know, she's she's so feminine um she's so soft she's so um you know all the things that he was saying about her and he was comparing the two and i i met you i was like oh, i don't compare I just you know enjoy what you enjoy about her and enjoy what you enjoy about you know your other friend he was like yeah no i do but i, I just see like the difference and stuff like that and he said that the new girl he felt was like just like more open to things more fun like the mm. other relationship maybe it's starting to you know, drag down or she nags a lot. I don't know what men call nagging. You know, you know how you know how you got yeah, 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 yeah. The <laughs> nagging thing is usually when we start to give you the hint, hint like, yo, nigga, I'm going, I'm fucking with somebody. I actually will stay with her ass if you don't fucking get together. But no, <laughs> but no, nah, it's it, well to turn it around. Can a woman court a man? I do not recommend that. <laughs> I think a woman can show a man affection, yes, but courting and being now you stepping into the masculine, you might make him feel feminine and uncomfortable. Just like I don't think a, a woman can um, propose to a man, you know. That's just corny. That's why average Joe's corny because he doesn't make himself a cool cat to be around too scared of social rejection which makes him spiritually repulsive yeah you reading my stories most man <laughs> mm. my words may be a little hyperbolic but unconfident men disgust me because i see that they can be so much more free you sound like Mike right now, Moose Man. You reading my stories? <laughs> you sound like Mike from our stories. And those yeah, of you that are joining in that. right now, this this is a blog. So yeah. speaking in terms of characters here. Me personally, I love a confident man. So that's like so important. You know, a man that walks with his head up and stuff like that. I love that. That's it. Um, is that common that a man are confident? Oh, no. <laughs> I, I think, you know, I guess it really just depends on the person and their social skills and stuff like that. If they're confident or not. I don't I don't know because, you know, I'm not a man with a tan. <laughs> I just know not every man is confident. No. Give them an example of a physically a confident man that walks the street that you just, you're in a store and he passes by. Just walking. What what what, what was he? Has some chest out. Okay. I don't know. In my mind, it's like his chest out. He's walking through. Mm. <laughs> Excuse me, miss. Oh, can you get that for me, please? Sure, no problem. Thank you. You know, I, <laughs> mm. I don't know. Confidence is like you know. He walks in, 
it walks in the restaurant. Hey, I'm here with my lady. Table for two. You know, I don't, I don't know what guys do. <laughs> but you, you know, you know, you know what guys, you know what y'all do. Don't act like you ain't one of them. Yeah, I do. I go. <laughs> I dare yeah. show be using that shit all the time. <laughs> shit. <laughs> I, shit. I play that shit all the time. Like, watch this. Watch what I do. Are you serious? Watch this shit right here. Like, oh, mm -hmm. you smell nice. Oh, thank you. Uh, you know, I never complimented a man. That's cool. Say, you all right? You need something? That, yeah. I need that thing. You lift that up. Let me, let me start on this height real quick. I'm going to get that for you. Hold on. You good? Like, Definitely, you, wow. men love compliments. I know that. Hell. I Can you speak on that? Yes. What? I, tell on one, I had a friend one time ask me um, for a little advice on something that um, she was, you know, with a relationship. And I said, you know what? Just start complimenting him more. Just and then she was like, "How? What do you mean?" And I'm like, "Just, just throw them out there. Try to, try to average like five to ten compliments a day." She was like, "Why five to ten? Whoa, I can't do that. So many." I was like, "All right, one to two. Just try to get over two compliments a day. Just tell him, tell him he looks handsome today. Tell me he's beautiful. I don't know. I use the word beautiful a lot. So I'm like, "Oh, you look so beautiful today." And we're like, "Oh, not right now for Timo." And I'm like, "Oh no, I'm serious." <laughs> I, that's how much compliment I give him, my partner. Now she <laughs> told another woman that this, and I had a gentleman that hit me up on my DM. He said, "Yo, Nate, why women don't compliment us?" So I said, "I'm not gonna lie, man. That's a big thing, man. Yo, a lot of y'all women need to listen to this. A lot of yeah. men, trust me. If he you takes out really the get garbage, a like that. Mm -hmm. compliment. Oh, you, you took out that garbage. I wasn't even expecting that. Thank you. That was good how you did. That was good how you took that garbage mm -hmm. out." <laughs> Yeah, they'll take the garbage out more. Like, oh, let me take that garbage out. Last time she said that was good. Or they put up the curtain rod. Oh, wow, that was nice how you put that curtain so fast. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta do things. Thanks like to that. you, you you were the one that gave me the best advice on this. I, I appreciate you putting me on to this content. All that, just give it yeah. to us, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because that's the, it's not even a battery in the back, but now what ends up happening is now you're my. You're my, you're part of me now. I need you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like a therapist. I don't hate to use it like this, but it's like a therapist that's pushed you every day to be motivated. Like you're gonna be addicted to that person. Like you can't do shit without him, right? So yeah, try so giving that man that encouragement. Men need it. Yo, men need like, yo, that so much. Badly, man. Badly. That women, women, when you listen to this message, that goes a long, long way. You know, you gotta compliment them. The littlest things get throw it out there, and they they do appreciate it like so much. It helps yeah, build more confidence in your man too, because he's like, yeah, I got this woman, she's loving on me. You know what I'm saying? Ask for sex too, that makes your man confident. And you're like, baby, I just want you so bad. You know, just throw it out there one day. Don't don't just always wait for him to. to I used to be like that. You know, personally, wait. I used to always kind of wait. I never really ever initiated sex. I would be the one fake sleeping. And you know, <laughs> you pull right. up the panties and stuff and I help you. But now <laughs> I, I would probably be like, I miss you. I don't come over. You know, something like that. I'm a a little more, a little more aggressive. Not like too much, not like masculine or overly aggressive, but just putting it out there. I don't have to just feel like, oh, I gotta wait for him. You know, I I don't mind putting it out there. Like, what are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> Yeah, but sometimes what, what happens if you can just tell your man, like, yo, when you going to give me some of that good dick later? Like, Definitely. Just, that's, how, that's, that's how. That's how. That's, that's huge. <laughs> On the blog, if you read the blog, ladies, take a page out of Fabiola's book. She, her and Mike have to, they, like, basically have sex every 48 hours because she be like, where's my dick? <laughs> Damn, straight up. Yes, Taylor the Natural is so true. I, it's so true that that little thing. I, I, I'll be complimenting all day. My big like, come on, Fatima, not right now. I'm like, no, I gotta tell you. <laughs> Damn, yo, Fatima is the shit. Man. Um, let me ask you. Let me let me ask you this: What character in your blog could you relate to the best? You know, I feel. 
every character because I'm so relatable. I relate to like every woman, you know, I, I just I um I just see myself in everyone and I try to like, you know, just take a little piece of, of this one or that one and um, spice up my own life and stuff like that and be able to use my own creativity and my own imagination and stuff like that. Like if you see the um, the logo for Sextopia, if you if you look at it, when you first glance at it, it might look like a woman with her legs spread open, you know, but then when you really stare at it, you're like, oh no, it's just a river with some mountains in the, in the sun, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it gives you that illusion. So I, I like to keep the mystery. And I feel like you could take a little part of this and that and not like like change who you are or make like an alter ego, but just like, oh, that works for you? Okay, well, let me see if I, that might work for me. And so if it don't work, then you chuck it. But if it did, you know, you got it in your little toolbox the next time. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Taylor the Natural. I'm like a running force for compliments. People be like, damn, Taylor, that was so nice. I never realized that about myself. I'm telling you, Taylor, that's why me and you get far because I be complimenting all the time, too. I get so far with my compliments. I, that, that takes me all the way. <laughs> she know she know the source. She know the secret. Mm -hmm. Are men missing my cheese most strong, aggressive, masculine pride? Uh, I don't, mm, no, I I feel, mm, I don't know. I, you know, the frequency I'm on, you know, I, I, I'm, I generally meet more confident, strong people. Um, if you're thinking of like, in terms of every day, you know, everything is, we're so over, like just bogged down with just so much information and, you know, I, I don't really know. I think that if you don't want to show, you know, machismo, that, that people might take that as like toxic or stuff like that. Me personally, I don't. I like machismo. Like, I like when a guy gives me that. And I like when a guy could be like, chill, chill, Fatima. You know what I'm saying? I need that sometimes. Like, chill. All right. I had enough. Like, don't let me go on and on. Just chill me out. You know, don't shut the fuck up, me. You know, if <laughs> that's the machismo up mode, it's like, shut the fuck up, bitch. I can't take it. Then, no, I don't think men are missing that. <laughs> I think men, too many men have that. But if he's just on some chill, like, I had enough, you know, that's sexy to me. I'm like, so what you want me to do then? I'm sorry. I start apologizing. I was the one pissed. You done met. <laughs> <laughs> you pissed me off, but now I'm apologizing. Like, what do you want me to do? I'm sorry. <laughs> do you feel that a lot of women, what can women learn on your blog to strengthen their decisions and choices when choosing men? You know, ooh, that's a good question. I feel like if you read the stories, you can... Um, you know, like I said, take a little piece from all the different characters, from all the different stories. You could see someone that you relate to. That's why, like, right now, the main stories are um, Mike and Fabiola, but there's going to be some other stories coming out within, you know, the next few weeks with one of the other characters, Sam, and, and her stories. And she's, like, totally opposite. She's, like, a very dominating woman. She knows she wants to have sex. As soon as she meets you, she knows if she's going to F you or not. She's like, you know, she's not like, um, uh, or has to be courted per se. She's more like, uh, uh, she knows what she wants and she doesn't mind going out to get it. So I think you could take a little bit of everyone mm -hmm. if you want. But women, we, we love to be soft, but we're not always given that opportunity. So if you're with your woman, give her that opportunity to be soft. Babe, take a day off. You know, she cooks, you clean, do the dishes for her. You know, just give her an extra minute to maybe shower, put some lingerie on so she'll have a little extra time to be soft for you. Thank you. Oh, shout out to Little Smoke. I think she appreciates that. Thank God you. Goddamn bacon said, hello, hey, she can carry me to bed anytime. Uh, <laughs> tell her, have a good night. We appreciate you. Thank you. You too, Taylor. Have a good night. 
tell Mike I said, so by the way, tell him met her her other half on my chat. Oh, I love that. Yeah, oh. literally. Like they're together. I'm talking like she moved in with him and everything. Right Taylor, now. email me S X Topia blog at gmail.com. Let's put a let's put a little story out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anonymous, of course. Tell, if she will, for sure. Tell her definitely hit her. Definitely hit her up. For she sure. would love to hear this. Yeah, She's been rolling like with her strong for a long time, but we were doing chats from like January strong. Like we were talking like nine people in the chats, and we did it from like like four or five months. And tell her wow. supporting. Yeah, she was here. Her and Mike was here. So. Oh, my, oh, my his name is Mike Taylor. Go to the blog and read a Mike and Fabiola story, and. I challenge you to do a role play as Fabiola. Mm. <laughs> I challenge you, Taylor. Challenge you, Taylor. <laughs> challenge you, challenge you, tell him, telling you. Um, most men said you say you you seem pleasant because you appear to have a youthful cheerfulness, which can be rare to see a woman during everyday life. Yeah, you know, because I'm doing what I love. I'm talking about what I love, so it, it's it's like really a natural feeling right now. And I just um, appreciate all the questions and comments and the support and the love, you know, that really helps a lot as well. So I, I'm just feeling so like loved by um, Ask Nathaniel's channel in the chat that it's just, you know, I'm able to kind of bring it out. <laughs> yeah. I feel at home. <laughs> well, it's, 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 been, it's been her week to that degree. And y'all see what I'm talking about that in a few minutes, but it's been her week. So to speak, because I haven't even did it live since we last was up. I mean, this week was just that crazy, but I wanted to keep it exclusive because um, she's just an incredible person. I'm just gonna keep it just right there. I'm not gonna rock the boat any further. She's dope. So definitely, definitely, we are really, really trying to get y'all into this natural stimulation, getting back yeah. into reading, letting the mind exercise rather than sitting on the couch and be a deadbeat, literally. <laughs> Yes. So let's shit roll, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and Will said, it seems like social media is trying to cancel the alpha male. Oh, the alpha male could never be canceled. They could try all they want. That's never going to happen. Never, ever, ever. Never. But yeah, I agree. They are. Look, look how they shut down Lil Boozy and like twist up everything he want to say and stuff like that. I and I'm not going to bash at anyone. I'm not, I don't mean I it like that. I'm just saying when you have an opinion, whether it's whatever that opinion is, I'm not saying I agree with it or this channel agrees with anything. I'm just saying, look how they do you. <laughs> so. Yeah, they, they, they kill it. Oh my God. Yeah. That was a great interview, brother. But y'all. Uh, God doesn't make sense. I think the difference between she means is she's dominant versus domineering. Yeah, yeah, yes. I, yes, exactly. Not like toxic with it. Abusive. Shoot your questions, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, James Marlowe says, where are the women that want men to treat them like leaks? Oh, every woman wants that. Come on. Come on, James. You kidding me right now? I know you are. <laughs> I can't see one that does it. <laughs> I don't know. What, what do you think women are weak for versus what they need versus what are they weak for what they want versus what they need? Um you know, like I said, if you could if you know how to like give your woman attention and make it like not just boring old but like really adding some spice to it doing a face chat um sex or just like just trying to um spice things up and stuff preach quick <laughs> if in the comments i swear i gotta get used to reading stuff and still not losing my train of thought <laughs> i'm so sorry I'll, I'll do better next time guys I've, i forgot what the question <laughs> <laughs> so see a see a compliment what a compliment does, right? What, what, what yeah, a compliment I, does, right? I get choked up. Compliments are powerful. So, like you know, as as far as um, can a man, can a male and female? Let's just twist it up a little bit. Can a male and female, in regards to the courting situation, 
men would love to do that, but they feel as if when they court a woman, a woman's going to call them corny. Um, well, I mean, you could involve her in the courting process, you know, like, oh, um, hey, Fatima, I was, I was wondering, are you free Saturday night? I'd be like, why, what's up? Oh, I was thinking we could do a nice dinner. Maybe hear some music afterwards to get a drink. Oh, okay, that's nice. I don't see any woman that's not gonna want that. I don't. I don't know. I mean, cause me, I'm, I'm traditional, so I kind of like that. <laughs> I like direct to the point. And another thing, men, if you could add this, um, put some pressure on a woman. You know, like even the way I just said it as a guy was kind of corny. But like, if you like, don't take no for an answer, you know, be able to like put the pressure on where she has to like really think about like, mm, I don't want to say no, like, uh, you know, like add a little bit of like that fire, that pressure to um, how you're dealing with the woman as well. Like, that's very sexy. Very sexy. Yeah, we're, talking, we're talking about in person, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even over the phone, like with, with asking a woman out, you know what I'm saying? Framing it in a way like, hey, I want to take you out Saturday. You free? As opposed to, hey, what are you doing Saturday? That leaves it open to be like, no, I can't. I made plans already. But if you're like, yo, I want to I wanna take you out on Saturday. You free? Even if she ain't free, she's going to make herself free. She's like, you want to take me out? Oh, okay. I'm going to be out free. <laughs> can can, can, can I have the same here? effect? Can I, does, that, does that apply also to somebody DMing a woman? I mean, is that just impersonal or just comes off whack? How would that be if somebody could do the same thing through a DM? Would you recommend? Yeah, that? if you make contact with someone through a DM, don't wait long to ask them out. You know what I'm saying? And ask them out. Like, if, if they're responding, you say, hey, how are you? And they're like, oh, I'm good. And, they, and you could tell, like, they want to speak or whatever. I say men are quicker to send a dick pic than they are to even ask you out on a formal date. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it doesn't stop. I hate to blow y'all up. It doesn't stop. Ask that woman out before you send a dick pic. Damn, damn, y'all gotta stop. Journey to Fitness says it makes it seem like I was going already to do something, and I just thought that I may enjoy it too. Yeah, she might enjoy it. I, yeah. That's exactly right. That's a good way to add her into it. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. It does make her feel, oh, you thought about me? Okay, sure. Yeah, I like that. That does work. That works. That works. That works, Journey to Fitness. Yeah. Whoa, look at that <laughs> photo. <laughs> I got what, is this, <laughs> what is this dude talking about here? Master, do you have to rewarn your smelly dress socks now, sir? Please. <laughs> Come on, bro. What do you? Come on, bro. I don't swing that way. To each his own. But God damn, he, he keep coming up here with all these different names, yo. Hold on, I got. Come on, bro. To each his own. That's just. Let me be me. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Where the site we submit our stories, or do we just email them to you? Well, shout out to Ransom McKissy. Yes, you have to email them to me um, just so I could read the content first before I put it out. And I'll respond back right away. It'll be personal between me and you. You know, like I said, I am the creator of the blog. So you don't have to worry about like someone reading your personal email. If you want to just make contact first and email me at sxtopiablog at gmail.com. And we can make contact like that. Yeah. But right now, I can't just let it submit straight to the site. But maybe eventually. Good advice. Thanks. A lot of pretty women get called, get catcalled, but very few axed out on dates. Just don't be scared out here. Either get rejected or die with regret and pain in your heart as an old man. Yeah. I, guys, I mean, we're waiting because <laughs> a woman like me, I'm not going to ask you out. So I, I, 
only if we have something established and then I'm like, hey, can you take me out? I want to go here. I saw this restaurant, I saw these reviews, something like that. But the initial content, it needs to come from the man and it needs to um, be, you know, confident, forceful, you know, with a little side of pressure and um, you'll, you'll get far with that. Like, don't, don't leave room for no. Don't leave room for no. Women like that because it makes us think like, he, he commands respect. All right. You know what I'm saying? Goddamn bacon. Hell, I'll take it a bit further than that. I'll tell her she can meet me at whatever location I want to go anyway. It shows confidence. Yeah. If you know, if you know me personally, I don't like choosing on the date, especially if it's like a first, second day i feel like you choose where you think you know would be cool for me and you to go i don't know your budget i don't want to say you know a place and that you know might not be in your budget or whatever but always find out what food she doesn't like you know just like what, like when people are like oh what 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 what, what do you like to eat a lot of people that i don't like i don't like like indian food i'm not a big indian person so i'll say something like that so you know wherever you like but just as long as it ain't indian yeah, I like that. that. That definitely does show confidence. These guys out here on point, Nate. Oh, no, I just have the website. I just have the website right now. But maybe once I put the audio out, um, maybe Nate could put it on his channel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, once, 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 once she gets the audio right? and yeah. the videos that we have here, yeah, this is... It's a given. It She's exclusively going to be here, but once she has that thing, we're going to have the audio. It's going to be crazy. It's, it's, it's a little, Me and her cooking up a lot of things behind the scenes. Trust and believe that. Uh, Ransom has a question for you. Okay, Ransom. Are you sure every woman wants it in many circles? Chivalrous men are consistent. Now, we're adding that chivalry with the confidence mixed in with the pressure that you're going to put. So when all of that comes together and you have all three, bam, you got that woman. I promise you. So no, no, it's not a simp. It's not. Unless you're just naturally a simp. You know, <laughs> if you're just naturally a simp, just try to add a little pressure with that and build up your confidence a little bit more. But no, we women, we enjoy being treated like a lady and traditional values. We do. We really do. We, a lot of women want to get back to that. I mean, I don't know what YouTube, other YouTube channels, um, the audience might watch, but I know a lot of the content I see, I, I hear that a lot. I, I do personally hear that. And to be in the chat, women seeing and seeing stuff like that. Do you feel that the black, um, Hispanic, modes of male and female getting closer together or it's just a big war on youtube like from you being a spectator outside of you um um having your blog what what kind of impression are you getting with youtube in regards to the type of videos that's impacting women i think and, I and mean, men and men i think what i could take away from watching um you know urban content is um People just want to want to get away from toxic. Like everyone really wants love and a good, healthy relationship, and you know, without the toxic behavior, the narcissistic behavior, and stuff like that. That's what I see. I see um, women just, you know, looking for a man, you know, no particular um, race, but just someone that they can relate to. That's not like narcissistic, toxic. I, f I find like that's what. A lot of the topics are and then men are looking for women that aren't gold diggers or whatever they want to do you know certain women as and stuff like that solid rock got some good things shout out to solid rock Hi, he solid actually rock. uh has a great a great thing for you and he says here you go read that 
<laughs> All right. I read some of your blogs for Tima. That Jamaica story is crazy. Sam is wild. LOL. Yes, Sam. That's what I was saying a little earlier. She is wild. In all her stories, she has that confidence. Like, she's that woman that she kind of knows what she wants from a guy. Just looking at her, she's like, yeah, I got that and stuff like that. Yes. And you know what really I love about writing a Jamaica story is I spoke to some of my Jamaican friends. Friends, and I was able to make it more authentic with the patois that is in the story. So if you are Jamaican and you're in the chat or you um, watch Rock, this video later. Solid Rock is actually Jamaican. He's actually Jamaican. Right. Tell me, Solid Rock, tell me how my patois was in the story. Put it in the chat. <laughs> what you doing about my patois? Because I'm really proud of that patois. <laughs> And I have my Jamaican, um, my niece, actually my nieces have Jamaican, so her mom <laughs> definitely helped me with my pat so off. I said, listen, I need this man to talk in his native tongue because I need that visualization on point for this story. So <laughs> it really made visualize. you, yeah, it really made you be able to visualize because he's speaking um, in Patois, their native tongue, and you know, she's speaking English, <laughs> so it's really cool. Uh, Moses said, technically, chivalry, chivalry was based on a code of ethics among the knights that also colorated the woman's good behavior. Treat her based on what you are comfy with. Don't be a chump, be a leader. Yes, that's exactly it. Just because you're being chivalrous, it doesn't mean you're any less masculine or you're a chump. You are a leader. That woman will follow behind you. She'll be laughing and gleeing, twirling her hair, all that. Trust me. Trust me. I promise you. He is so right. Yes, I agree. <laughs> exactly. What would woman rather you rather you choose? Go to my place, breweries, fun place to even if she flakes the smell of beer being brewed poor, poured is eternal. Is um, I'd rather go out and have some fun. I'm not, you know, sometimes when you're like, oh, let me go and come to my place and let me cook you a nice dinner. It's, it seems kind of, that seems cheesy. You know, let's go out. Let me see how you interact with people. <laughs> let me see your, your energy level and stuff like that. You invited me over to cook a meal. That is so cheesy. That's like for like the fifth date or something. You know what I'm saying? Where you trying to, yeah, I've been kissing already and stuff like that. And maybe <laughs> going uh, to okay. You talk about for the first date, you just don't, you should never tell. No, nah, never. Because she's going she's gonna to think you are so trash, so corny. <laughs> that's actually good advice that's real great advice uh, um, what's your email address again oh yes it's the name of the blog so it's S-X-T-O-P-I-A and then the word blog B-L-O-G at gmail.com so sextopia blog at gmail.com it's a very uh, private confidential email and like you can see, she has the. And if you go to the website, it, it is posted all over the website. You can find it. The link to the um, email is on the website. And you have uh, God. Okay, so Solarox says, "LOL, I almost thought you were Jamaican for a minute. I thought she must have had a lot of Jamaican friends." Exactly. I grew up with pure Jamaicans. <laughs> Don't let me bring out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. I love reggae music. Um, fun fact about me, I had a best friend um, named Aisha, and she was from Jamaica. She had got, her mom used to get all the dance hall uh, tapes and stuff, DVDs. All and the dumplings and all that. What? We'd be uh, in the house yeah. practicing all the latest moves, like, <laughs> going out, oh, wearing her mom's man. clothes to go out. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Mm. I love Jamaicans. I've been to Jamaica. I mean, I'm not in the Jamaica trip, but <laughs> my Jamaica trip was nowhere near as spicy. But yeah, I love Jamaica when I went. Keep and this, this is this is something that people need to hear. He also says, "Keep up the good work. It's good content. Support our website, y'all. We need to get back to reading. In so many ways, the reading stimulates the mental." It's so true. You know, it's just like when you think about. Um, 
when you were mentioning like the 90s and like it was such a great era and stuff like that. But even like down to the music, they used to pull stuff from the 70s that, you know, maybe we didn't hear or the 80s and then they would incorporate it into the music and then it will open you back. Oh, that was Diana Ross. That was one of her songs. Oh, that was Otis Reddit or, you know, something like that. So it will be the same thing. You could be like, oh, this is just like when Zayn was out, or this is just like a Donald Coins, you know, stuff like that. So we could kind of, like, always recreate. Always got to keep recreating. Oh, we I miss that so much. God, I miss it. It's funny you bring that up, taking her back to the place to cook together and watch Netflix now with Seal with the Deal with the High Rest. But hold on, let me pause on this. First and foremost, ladies and gentlemen, I got an announcement to make. I got an announcement. Drum roll. <laughs> Drum roll, y'all ready for this? Y'all I mean, like, yo, what is this? What is this? Make? I got an announcement to make. I've really got a real important announcement to make. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Fatima. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Nate, for blowing me up on my birthday. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we, we, we don't talk no ages, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you, I, I, once I turn 25, don't oh, ask me shit about my own But shout out to you, and I wish you many more. You are an incredible person, and I really genuinely believe in you, and I will support you. As long as you, you give me this authenticity, I will give you 150%. Mm -hmm. Thank I you. I will. And you just I keep doing it, man. That. So it's, and I know you do. And that's why I'm going to make sure I'm going to do everything I'm supposed to do. The new dream and team. Yes. <laughs> bringing that's, love that's, back to the community. Bringing love back to the community. Ooh, I like that. All about the love. I like that. Shout out to NYC King. Oh, thank yes. you, NYC King. <laughs> Y'all going to have me blushing now. Y'all going to have me blushing. <laughs> and we love the hair. And uh, listen, you. ladies and gentlemen. We got some exclusives coming <laughs> later, but I ain't gonna say nothing. Can't just behind the scenes, it's gonna be crazy. So I'm so telling you right now, some good work. <laughs> you want to catch this live tomorrow yeah. with the behind the scenes clip. Great content, great content for tomorrow. Gonna be really excited. It's gonna be, it's gonna really, be really excited. excited. We're gonna bring some so. really good love back to the community. Yes. You know, remembering how traditional val values is what's got us here. So mm -hmm. let's keep it going. Thank you let's so much. I appreciate you having me tonight. No, nah, listen, man. We had to preach. I just had to wait to the time because I said, listen, I'll make sure she makes it to 12 because I know she got things to do tomorrow. But, I appreciate that. Thank you, know, you so see, much, everybody. Uh, everybody's showing the love right Thank now. Thank you. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I love that Stephen Wonder Boy. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> I love that. Happy birthday. And, and we need that, man. So this is a lot of love. We got a lot of love here. The goddamn Baker says happy birthday to you. Thank, um, you. Thank you. Thank you. made it into a new year, her new year. You know what I mean? Yes, this is like, my solar you so return. <laughs> yes, this, this is the I true time. Around. So, yeah, so when y'all want to do your little resolutions, do it on your birthday. This is real talk. Yes. So y'all really do it. I went and, you know, around the back. We about to really get on the dream team mission. Shout out to Sala Rock. Yeah, Sala, said, you, you feel me, Sala. You know where I'm coming from. He know that. <laughs> <laughs> he know exactly where I'm coming from. Oh man, he's he, let me tell you something. This dude here, um, he's a solid brother, he's an authentic brother, real, real, real man, like you know, just mm -hmm. with his family, everything. I just admire the brother, and he's really rooting for us. He's been right. really, really studying us, and it's been an amazing thing. And you know, we're gonna work together. But when I'm down, she gotta pull me up, and when she's down, I gotta pull her up. Like, that's how the only way we're gonna do this because our shit's gonna be true true authenticity it's going to be a really really amazing thank scene. you yeah. they see the love is here but what we're going to do ladies and gentlemen listen she has to enjoy her birthday i was just trying to wait for the midnight thing to come in here birthday. you know what i'm saying girl but, you know <laughs> tomorrow we, we 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 got some good footage please stay tuned stay, please tuned. stay tuned birthday footage we're gonna yeah, do a birthday yeah. what is that called a vlog we're gonna do a birthday vlog we're gonna do a vlog now we're gonna do a vlog and we'll premiere it and then we'll come yes. on live after and talk about it <laughs> yes so be very very we're gonna have some aware. fun tomorrow gonna have some fun man like so you know what i'm saying just get the just i'm warning you 
<laughs> we just gotta make sure that whatever music is going on, if I have to put it in production, oh, okay. post production, I gotta make sure we tweak it. If it's we can turn the music down. Yeah, we turn it down. So it's gonna be a beautiful thing, man. So right. Mama, you enjoy your birthday. I Thank wish you. you nothing but the best and um I'm glad that the good Lord is just really, really, really embracing and taking our yeah. blessings in. He may not be there when you want him, but he is always on time. Always on time. Always. Okay, Everything so, you want is there. You just got to bring it in. Yes. So this is, and this is the thing, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to realize this before we leave. You know, stop always thinking like male and female. It's hard for me to meet females doing this because they're almost like, oh, you really want to work with me. I'm like, really? Like, you thought, like, Come on, yo! Like, are you serious? <laughs> oh, I thought that was just your gimmick. No, motherfucker! Like, I want, I got shit to do. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? If you, if you, if you forget the passion, if you have the loyalty, I can give you the same loyalty back. Yes. Yeah, go give me the loyalty. Then just go kick rocks. Like, I can do this by myself. Let's just get out of here. Like, I, I can't do it. So, much love. NYC King, yes, the love is over here. Damn, I forgot about the black version of the birthday song. Yes, I did that recently. <laughs> and all y'all know who know me personally, y'all had to do that recently. So much love. Katima you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, much love to everybody here, man. And um, she, um, you know, make sure she just give her her blessings. Go to the website. Go read to the website. You, read it if you're in a relationship. Read it together. I promise you, you will thank me later. Be like... I thank you for telling me to read it with my partner. We turned up. We turned up. How about, how about struggling <laughs> relationships? Would you, would, you, would you recommend struggling relationships to, 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 to go to your, um, your blog? Yeah, I definitely do because it, it brings in your own imagination, your own creativity. It helps get the juices flowing. You know, hearing, hearing sex, reading sex, any anything like that can... um get those juices flowing, especially when it's tastefully written and you just want more. So every person that gives me feedback, you know, they it's always a happy ending, I should say. Always. Um you you're genuine, so that means you went through a lot. So um no. before we leave, what was your epiphany to make you be such a genuine person? <laughs> I mean, honestly, I I was raised up, not dragged up. <laughs> mm. I was very well cared for. I was I was definitely very well cared for. Um, I feel like that just as you know, life experiences. You know, I've had my ups and downs in terms of relationships and stuff like that, and finding myself and being finding my confidence, my inner voice. This is like the Fatima who's very confident. She has her inner voice. You know, I've always been an entrepreneur. So I, I've always had like this creative energy, but I've never um, I've never like written it down and stuff like that. So this is a different direction. Like I've always owned businesses, helped people establish businesses, pop-up shops and stuff like that. I had a clothing line, laundry dry cleaners, and, and the list goes on and on of um, shipping store. So I've been an entrepreneur pretty much the whole time. And um, this is like a level of entrepreneurship to me, but it's about something that I just love so much. Like, I don't have to make a dollar off the blog. You know, I, I'll just pour all my love into it because it's just fun. That's why you're going to get your blessing. Um, yeah. Ransom, we got to get out of here. But she, she says, Felice Kaluta. I, I love Leo. Is he crazy? <laughs> I love Leos. One one of my um brothers is a Leo and he was August 6th. Oh, Feliz Tatianos. Thank you. <laughs> I hope I said that right. I could probably say Patois better than Spanish. <laughs> yeah, see that that's the New York Rican story of Spanish, because I, I try to do it, but I said I'm gonna leave that to her. But she's she like, well shit, nigga, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I got you know what that. <laughs> that's that. That's the. I know y'all would have probably. Oh, in DR, they they would have said it that way. Okay, yeah, you got that here. But shit, most of the Spanish <laughs> people here don't speak Spanish. We just 
stand for what we reason. So much love. Thank you, Bobby. She appreciates that. Thank you, Bobby. Um, good Rosemary, night. give you a blessing. Y'all have a good night. You're, we'll make multiple blogs for your blog. She appreciates Shout out to Indian Thank Aura. You. How I you doing, baby girl? Service, man. I feel that. I feel you. Yeah, yeah she's good. So we, we appreciate you. Shout out to yeah, Indian Aura. I love Aura. the way she wrote that. Good night, Nate. Yeah, love. I like this. Too. See that though with the little moon, <laughs> yeah. right? That's my girl it's right cool. there. It's super cute. That is my girl right there. You hear me? So much love, man. Abby Jackson said, happy belated, sweetie. It's a lot of love here. Thank it's a lot you. of people. And stay tuned. This is a 24-hour situation by God's yeah. grace. So y'all stay tuned, and we will be back in a hot one.